hi there and welcome back to another episode at station road now today we continue on with the curved warehouse build and where we left off in the last episode which was part 2b we had most of the main structure assembled minus a few further bits and pieces to do so in this video we carry on and mostly get this building complete So just a recap on last video and of course there's a link in the top corner for that we got most of the walls on there was the rear curved wall which i hadn't yet installed and we had all the glazing and brickwork done and you could really start to see the form of this curved warehouse taking shape so it's progressed a little bit further and i think Without further ado, we'll just get into all the last little bits that were finished off and how some of this work was carried out. So one of the first things to carry on with was a little one-story lean-to type office admin area at one end of this curved building. Now, I'd pre-printed all of this out and had it all cut out, but of course I hadn't actually got to the point in the last video of actually installing that. So much the same as the assembly for the main structure, we had the laser cut components. So we had two end walls and then we had the main front wall, which of course had a doorway and a window in it. And of course the doorway I'd actually done in a double layer. So it had a further recess and further brickwork that went in in a bit of a recess. So unlike the main structure of the building, because this little wee cute office area was so small what i decided to do was assemble the laser cut components first glue them in place and then i wrapped the entire structure with the brickwork afterwards so you essentially don't end up with any seam whatsoever unlike what i did on the main buildings now i think probably in regards to the main buildings they're just simply too big to really try and manage a full wrap around all four sides of quite a large building and also the fact that it's on a curve. So at the other end of the building, I kind of felt I really actually needed to add in a door at that end because what I want to do is also add some steps going up at the other end as well. And I noticed that in the prototype or in the warehouse in Oldham that there were some kind of ramshackle looking add-ons to the building in various places so what I actually found was it was an old plastic kit uh, I think HO scale and I don't even know where it came from I think I might have bought it from an auction of a whole bunch of train stuff it used to be bigger so what I did is actually chopped it down pulled it apart spliced it down into a smaller size opened up the door entrance way a bit higher and then went over that and repainted it and weathered it and so forth and then of course on the interior side of that i added in a door because there was no actual door at the end of that building because this was kind of a bit of an afterthought at this end of the building so with that ready to go of course i won't be installing that or gluing that to the end of the building until i sort of worked out what else needs to go down at that end so after that of course the next thing i really wanted to sort of get into was the roof section now at this point i'd actually installed the remaining back wall the of the outer curve of the building so that's been installed and in place and that of course closed off the roof cavity at the top of the building so there's two layers really to this roof there is the flat layer and then of course there is the roof structure as well which is made up of laser cut card and what i need to do was just paint around the outer edges of this roof cavity because that part would actually be seen so once that was done then i could actually go around the inside of the parapets at the top and cover them in brick 
texture as well so once again this is an area that would actually be seen from the top of the building and that gives the impression obviously that this is a solid brick wall and it's brickwork showing all the way through to the interior cavity space of the roof so with the actual roof structure itself of course we got to the point where we'd actually applied the roof over the main structure of that roof and of course that is with kind of like a slate tile type texture that I used there and what I needed to do to finish that off of course was to apply some tile ridging across the top edges of the roofs and what I used in this situation was some grey paper with a texture printed on it and then of course cut into strips and then sort of pre-bent on the hard edge of the table and then they were trimmed and glued into place. So once we'd sort of had all that kind of interior cavity area of the roof actually worked out and that was all in position then it was a case of getting on to the parapets on the outer side of the walls at the top. So initially what I had planned to do and I'd printed them out and had them sprayed and so forth was the actual layers of parapet which were then glued to card and then of course I was going to hand cut these out now I did actually start doing that and then I got to a point where I sort of felt there's got to be an easier way because I was realizing that it was going to take a little bit of time to individually cut these out and also actually try and get a really tidy edge on it so I sort of went back to the drawing board on that one and what I actually decided to do is why not glue some brick texture to some card just a big blank sheet of brick texture and then put that in the laser cutter and actually laser cut them out with the brick texture in place now originally my thoughts that would be that that wouldn't work because it would probably burn the brickwork or burn the paperwork but I thought why not let's give it a go so the only thing that I really need to be very careful with of course with the laser cutter was to make sure that the horizontal axis for the laser was actually lined up to the brickwork so you didn't end up with the brickwork going on an angle and lo and behold it actually worked really well and I was able to cut out all these parapet layers on the laser cutter with the brickwork already in place and of course that saves a huge amount of time so of course once they're all cut out then it was a case installing all these parapets and they're in two layers so there was the first layer was slightly larger or it was slightly deeper and then the second layer was more shallow so you ended up with this sort of stepped effect in the actual parapets that ran around the top of the building so once that was done of course then we actually had the true thickness of the top of that wall which included the extra layers for the parapet so that needed some form of capping stone to run around the top now what I ended up using was some Metcalf capping stone now I had tons of this offcut left over from many years of kits and I thought the easiest way to do this because it might be quite tricky to try and bend card that was too thick and wood across the curves so what I actually did is use the thinner Metcalf capping stone strips and actually doubled them up and did one strip at a time so that meant that they were able to curve more freely and then of course another single strip of the capping stone on top of that which of course covered the join in the middle and then of course you end up with a reasonably convincing stepped capping stone across the top of the walls so the only downside of course to the Metcalf capping stones is they were rather pristine and almost sort of kind of a little bit bleached out really compared to some of the other concrete structures within the building so what I thought the best thing to do was to just tone this down with a black wash which I used some Tamiya acrylic and acrylic thinners and made a very diluted wash that I could then brush on and I just did that in a few layers to build it up and essentially dull it down and tie those capping stones into the building so the next step after that was 
looking at some downpipes and of course as I mentioned in the previous video the downpipes serve two purposes really of course there is the actual purpose for where does the water go obviously off the roof but also it was the ability to hide any seams or joins in the brick texture so I have used ratio downpipe kits and things like that and I did have a little bit of leftover stuff but this building is actually quite tall there's going to be quite a number of downpipes around the building and I sort of thought I need to find a way to make my own downpipes so in some situations I used the little wee drain boxes that sit at the top of the downpipe so I actually had a couple of spare ones of those from the ratio kits and then with the actual downpipe itself I just used a little bit of 1.2 millimeter rod and then for the actual joins in the pipe that you often see on downpipes I just used a 2 millimeter tube which was cut into very tiny little wee sections and then I spliced the back edge off the tube so it almost created what would look like a C, a letter C and then they actually clipped onto the 1.2 millimeter rod. Once I'd done that they all got a blast of black matte spray paint and then they were ready to be installed on the building. So because I didn't quite have enough of these kind of collection troughs or whatever you call them at the top of the downpipes I needed to make some more that were kind of similar and of course what I just used is some balsa wood that I chopped at various angles and shaved a bit off to chamfer them down and give them that same effect that the ratio ones did and they seemed to suffice quite well once they were painted with a matte black paint and they seemed to look all right on top of the drain pipes. So one of the last things I got on to was assembling a foundation for the building and from some photos I could actually see that there was a slightly thicker base to the building and it seemed to appear to have a, an angled concrete capping to it. So what I did in this situation because it's something that I couldn't really sort of work up on the computer and certainly something I couldn't laser cut because a laser cutter can only do a vertical laser cut or at least my one can only do a vertical laser cut so I cut strips of card with a 45 degree bevel cutter and you can actually pick these up reasonably cheap on eBay and AliExpress and places like that and I think they use in the picture framing industry for cutting the mount that goes around pictures and so forth but it worked well in this situation where I could cut strips of card at a 45 degree angle and then what I did is applied some strips of brickwork and once I'd done that then I trimmed that down to the depth that I actually needed for this foundation and then of course they were installed to the base of the building and that sort of gives it the sense that there is a foundation there it probably actually goes further into the ground and it gives something for any ground scenery and so forth to meet up with so that's as far as I've got for this particular episode. So one of the key components left to do of course is the weathering. Now I've had to hold off on doing that because the matte spray that I use, well at least the one that I really like using which is the Citadel Monitorum spray, unfortunately I've run out and so I've had to order some more so that of course won't be arriving for a week or two. So the weathering techniques are in fact very similar to some of the other projects I've worked on and in particular there's a link in the top corner for the Northlight engine shed which I went through a weathering process on that. So it's certainly come together quite nicely this curved warehouse and there are a few minor bits and pieces to finish off around the back of the warehouse where there is actually a slight incline of course next to the rower line and the foundation that I need to put together there is a little bit different to the foundation on the other side of the warehouse so at the moment that is looking a little bit odd
so there we have it for this curved warehouse build and now that this is complete we can now start working on other areas within this transition space between the two levels so of course there is going to be some landform and then also whether I continue some landform or possibly do some further terraced houses that step down the slight hillside so of course there is the work within that area and then there is working back towards the raised level of the goods yard as well so of course down at this end of the building we had this little kind of lean-to that's added on to the end of the building that will go into sort of maybe a little yard that might have some junk and other bits and pieces in it and then of course that will be right next to the street as it curves around at a 90 degree angle so there's yeah definitely more bits and pieces to do and finer detail as it progresses on so i certainly hope you've enjoyed today's video and hopefully you've gathered some inspiration of course and ideas for your own layouts and also with some techniques that have been used in the scratch built card construction of this warehouse so before i go i'd just like to say a huge massive thank you to everyone who's dropped in their comments on the previous videos and in particular it's really interesting to hear from those who are actually familiar with this warehouse or at least the the real larger version of it in Oldham and I love hearing the stories from people you know from their childhood about I remember that place and I remember going there and visiting it it's just fascinating I really enjoy those kind of comments that come in from people who are familiar with an area that lo and behold I've decided to base a model on so I'll sign off for now. Do take care everyone. Look after yourselves. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also drop in your comments and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.